so I'm going to ask you a question, and I strongly suspect I'm going to hear something about boxes of tea being dumped into the bay. But let me ask, what steps did the colonists take uh, to resist uh, greater British control and the imposition of new taxes? Actually, the, the resistance took multiple forms, including uh, the kind of action you've just described. Started with publications. Uh, James Otis, for example, wrote a pamphlet in 1764 on the rights of the British colonies. And he's the one who coined the phrase, taxation without representation is tyranny, which quickly became one of the rallying cries of uh, the colonies. Second, even though the colonies had developed very individual cultures and social and political systems, they did start to act in concert in some respects. The Stamp Act Congress issued a Declaration of Rights and Grievances on behalf of all of the colonies in 1765. And it asserted that only colonial assemblies had the right to impose taxes. Also asserted the right of colonists to a trial by jury in their locality. Reinforced the argument, all these colonists have the rights of British subjects and they are not being respected by the Crown. And also very critical of Parliament saying you cannot represent these colonies in Parliament because we have no representation in that Parliament. That, that empty chair in Parliament that represented the, uh, the colonies just was such an annoyance uh, to the colonists. In 1774, the colonies sent delegates to the First Continental Congress, which passed a resolution calling on the colonists to boycott all British goods. Another form of resistance uh, was literally taking to the streets or to the boats. Crowds rioted. They did what they could to intimidate British tax collectors. Violence erupted frequently, more frequently than, than we want to remember. Uh, one of the most famous is what we call today the Boston Massacre in 1770, when a mob had gone and literally taunted a British sentry at the city's custom house. And British soldiers responded by killing several of the protesters. Paul Revere used this incident to harden public opinion against the British. So we see a combination of those factors culminating in this sense of it's time for independence.